Hello, hello, and welcome back as I prepare to see if Operation Blood-Soaked Mountain lives up to the name in Perfidious Pete Plays XCOM 2. And I know I talked about the hypothetical plot of Blood-Soaked Mountain last episode. Leonardo DiCaprio, of course, would star, and I'm not ashamed to admit I'd feel much better right now if I had a little Leo on my side. If movies and television have taught me anything, and of course they're really the only thing that's ever taught me anything, it's that with the exception of growing pains, Leo is the guy that can tip any situation into your favor. I, I call it the, the DiCaprio Principle, and the DiCaprio Principle is sort of a fundamental law of cinema, and it reads as follows. The more peril Leo experiences, the more powerful Leo becomes. You leave him stranded, bitter, cold, and naked and alone, left for dead in a ditch in the side of some river somewhere, he's only gonna be, he becomes that much more dangerous, and that much more box office gold. You toss him into a gunfighting competition? Eh, that's fine, he'll steal the show from Russell Crowe and Gene Hackman. You try and drown him on the Titanic? He's gonna put more asses in seats than anybody since Bogart and Bergman. It's just, that's how it works. The man is irrepressible. He's like a blood diamond, or rather the carbon that goes into a blood diamond. The more heat and pressure you apply to the DiCaprio, the bigger and brighter the diamond becomes. And this situation we're in here, is a lot of heat and pressure, not just because, you know, there's a rampaging out of control fire burning over here, but also because we got a lot of enemies that are sort of unaccounted for, shall we say, and not necessarily enough firepower to deal with said enemies. I really don't know how we're going to take this robot. Really, it's the robot that's the overall problem. If I could get just one kill... Uh, Grandpa Festus, can you get... I mean, you can't get me anything, man. Nothing at all. Grandpa Festus doesn't even have a shot. Oh, that's real bad, Grandpa Festus. So you could, you could like lob a like a really worthless grenade out here that's gonna do what? Well, it will catch. You know what? If we could blow that car up, if we could catch this, blow up that car. Well, this is all we're gonna get out of you, though, right, Grandpa Festus? I mean, we got literally nothing else from you. We gotta get what we can get. So we're gonna have Grand Professor. We're gonna try to detonate this car and see if we can't chain up enough explosions between the grenade and the proximity mine to kill that codex. We should get some... We got some guaranteed car damage. Nope. Didn't do shit and it cloned itself. Well, okay. That's real bad. Now we have two six health enemies instead of one high health enemy. That's... Okay. That's definitely suboptimal. Judy Juglik has way more targeting opportunities now, though, so hey, target rich environment for the Tigress suddenly. Also, she can definitely kill one of those codexes. She might be able to do even more than one. She could r run to here, throw the axe, rage punch, and then theoretically still get off a rapid fire. Where would we want a rapid firing from? I'm thinking maybe... We rage punch to here. So we come to here, chuck the axe, rage punch to here. If we kick off a run and gun after that, we could move ridiculously far. This is real dangerous for Judy, though. You know what? It's dangerous, but if she kills even one, she will be untouchable. I think this is what we got to do. This is this is our pathway through. So we run and gun with the Judes. All right, Judes. Show me what you got, girl. You gotta show me something here. Gotta be showing me. Okay, she showed me something. What she showed me was that delightful dumper of hers. Oh, fantastic. There's a chrysalid as well. Well, that's awful. We didn't count on the hidden chrysalid. That's uh that's very bad, but that's okay. We've got some medicine on staff. We can we can fix that. No problem. It's fine, Judes. We'll patch you up in the no, no, don't throw it at him. No, nor that guy. Nor that guy. Nor that guy. I really need you to hit this guy. 80% is real bad, but this is a free action. What is the, what are the things all over your body, Judy? What is that slop that's covering you? You get some kind of goo all over you, girl. That ain't cool. What's, what's with the goo? Uh, I don't, I don't much like the looks of that goo. I'm not, I'm not ashamed to admit. I don't, I don't like the looks of the goo whatsoever. So we rage strike to here. Or we could now, because that's just, yeah, we got a rage strike on this guy because we want the kill. Non zero chance that the rage strike actually doesn't even generate the kill, though. 
Judy Juglix got one. She's still on a blue move and is untouchable. Judy, do you have what kind of what kind of bullets you got in your gun, girl? You got my blue screen rounds? Oh, you do. So you can make this robot be vapor. I'd really rather you not be standing next to a gas pump when you do that, though. Call me crazy. The gas pump just seems like a suboptimal position. It's definitely going to explode. Where, where where can we put you, Judy? Where can we, alternatively, we ignore the robot and kill the chrysalid instead. We could move back here and kill the chrysalid. That's, I mean, you know what? I think this is a sort of a compromise solution, and I think it will work. Instead, maybe we just rapid fire the chrysalid. This guy came out of nowhere. Double 95s. Yeah, this guy's all dead. Unless he dodges twice, in which case we're completely boned. Okay, well, one dodge and then a critical to the face, so not completely boned. Good work, Judy. That's uh, some relatively solid killing. So that just leaves us Achy Breaky and Jewels. Achy Breaky and Jewels are all we got left. Jewels, if we could get you a kill, we could have you be untouchable, which would mean that almost our entire team would be literally invulnerable to harm. The odds of you getting a kill, though, are basically zero. Are they basically zero or are they, like, objectively zero? They might be objectively zero. And we have how many codexes left? Two codexes, a gatekeeper, and this stupid robot left to deal with. This is uh, quite a bit of opposition we've still got on the field. And our mimic beacon is not going to account for all that. It's just not. What about a tongue grab? You know what? Frostbite is a free action. Let's throw it at the robot. If we can freeze the robot, this would be extraordinarily useful. We missed. Yeah, well, uh, that's going to happen. We might as well. A little disappointed, I'm not going to lie. What kind of bullets you got in your gun? You also have blue screen rounds. Well, you're going to do some significant damage. It won't kill this robot, but it'll hurt it real bad. Man, she got... Oh, she was... She's literally one health away. All right, well, we... I would love to not have to throw the Mimic Beacon here, but we do not have a choice. The Mimic Beacon has got to be deployed. Let's get it out here where everybody can see it. Now, we do have a couple members of our team who are also untouchable. Cyrus and Julie ain't taking any more damage. No matter what happens. Well, I mean, we got the chrysalid poison, which is ticking on us. We can't do anything about that. But other than that, I think we're probably okay. Oh, good. Another chrysalid. Well, that's perfect. Couldn't quite make it to anybody. So we got lucky in that respect. Was that the proximity mine going off? Couldn't have caught the robot and given us a little bit of free damage? Nah, that'd be too good. Also, we have left Judy Juglick entirely without cover. And our Mimic Beacon got vaporized in a single shot. Brilliant. Well, this is suddenly not good. Everybody's going to shoot at Judy. The Tigress may be going down here. Oh, you're going to empty everybody's weapon, aren't you? That's eh, fine. That doesn't even do damage, so really, I don't care. You can disable a couple weapons. We've got other tools in the shed to deal with disabled weapons. You're going to shoot at Judy Juglick, burn her untouchable. Yep, auto miss. Suck it! The Juglick is untouchable, but she's in real bad shape. If this robot wants to come gunning for her, she's in deep shit. Instead, he's just going to do the robot thing where he irritates us. Yeah, you're on fire. Everything is awful. Uh... What, what the hell was that? What, uh, what's going on? Who screamed and why? I mean, I know that you're on fire, but is that, is that why you screamed? Because of the fire? Or was that, a, that was a civilian dying? Never mind. Yep, that was, uh, that was a dead civilian. Okay. Well, this mission has gone just about as tragically awful as I expected it to go, so bully. That's uh, exactly what we needed, was a terrible, terrible fuck-up mission right here. I really... Uh, things have been going so badly lately. We're probably going to use Restoration this turn, but before we do that, Grandpa Juglick, can you please do something to fucking help carry your weight? Because you have been doing jack piss shit this entire mission so far. You have done fuck all, buddy. It's time to, to start bringing it back. Things have gone awry. You got to start reeling it in, Grandpa Festus. Yeah, well, you know, I do like fishing, Pete. I ain't going to lie. You tell me to go out there and start reeling some in. I'll get you some catfish. You know, I got to... 
number of different things I like to like to do in the off time. Little do a little like recreational fishing. It's always real good. Like to like to hunt maybe a little bit. Get out there with the old bow, chase out some of them big old twelve point bucks. What's rolling around in the Caldwell County woods? I'm a man. Uh, I'm a man of nature, Pete, and I'd love to get back to it. Get back to something more natural than this uh, horse shit we got going on here and hog waller and bullshit with all these stupid damn aliens everywhere. I'm just, I'm real unhappy about my, you know, about the way my life is going, Pete. When I, when I look down many years ago as a young lad, first freshly married to my love of my life, Jolene Juglick, 65 years my lady. When I first looked down on it and thought about how my life script was going to pan out, Pete, I got to say, this is, this is not what I imagined, son. This is not, uh, this is not at all what I thought. This is not how I thought the tale would end, Pete. I didn't, I didn't think, I was little bit of a cipher moment. I was a little like switch in that um, their Matrix movie. It's like, not like this, Pete. Not like this. Boom. We are still going to get a kill with Emmy Lou, and her second action is probably going to be just a reload because she's going to need some bullets in that gun. Gotta say, I'm, uh, did we just kill another civilian? Uh, no, we did not. All right, we're going to come back to you, Emmy Lou, because we may still need a grenade out of you. Achy Breaky, I kind of feel like you're going to have to revive, which means we've got the Wolfpack, the Tigress, and what's left of EL's turn, and we have to kill all of the shit on this map. That's probably going to be more than we're capable of doing. It's a pretty hefty ask. I mean, Cyrus Juglik is probably just going to throw the revive because we got a bunch of people who are hurt, a bunch more people who are poisoned. There's a lot of bad shit happening here. We do have the blaster launcher, but that's just going to clone. Yeah, you know what? That's that's objectively probably a bad idea. No. Double. Why is this? These guys are so fucking unhittable. The tyrant Chris could definitely hit him with a shred storm cannon, and he is down to just two armor. Alternatively, we could just make sure that each the wolf pack and Judy Juglick get a kill, making them untouchable. Because we could also do that. Then he's just going to shoot at Emily Juglick. We can get Jules a kill definitively. You know what? That This is probably the best way to go about this. We bring Jules up here. We have Jules take a kill. Jules can absolutely get a kill on this here robot, so do that. She will be untouchable then. She doesn't have rapid fire yet, but she does have untouchable. So you're untouchable, right? You're implacable. You do not have untouchable. We'll go rescue this civilian then. On the plus side, we have at least rescued all of the civilians now. Or at least all the civilians we need. There's still many more in peril, and we have no way to stop that. So we need to kill one codex, two codex. And then achy breaky. There was a revival. I, this is actually going to be kind of a bitch. All right, Tigress, you do not have a running gun. Wolfpack, do you have a running gun? You also do not have a running gun. Can anybody get a decent shot at this person? I, I don't know, because I can't really tell. Also, I can't really see that. I don't think anybody can even see that unit. Tigress, you can get up here. It would, it would be lovely if we could actually see what the hell was going on. All right, so let's just have you come up here. Probably we could have used a Shred Storm Cannon to some decent effect here, but we need this thing dead, not split into two. So we're going to hit it with the Rapid Fire. Can't miss. Just in case one shot, for whatever reason, turns out to not be enough, we'll have the follow-up. Pete, I can't help but notice that once again you have not Skulljacked the Codex. You're not wrong. We have definitely not Skulljacked the Codex once again. Although we could try and engineer it so that we can Skulljack. We've already sort of taken damage. I mean, at this point, what's the worst that could happen? You know what? I actually don't don't really sort of hate that plan. Let's... You know what? Yeah, let's do it. Let's just rescue some civilians. We're going to try and skulljack the Codex on what... I mean, this mission's already a clusterfuck. If it's going to be a clusterfuck, let's try and at least make it a clusterfuck for good reason, shall we? All right, so Silas Juglik, I would love to have you kill something, but it can't be that Codex. 
Which means somebody's probably going to have to take some heat from this gatekeeper, and that somebody is probably going to be you. Also, you will not be untouchable because there is no way we can get you a kill. We can move you here and have you do a little bit of rapid fire. Double 53s? That's terrible. Double 53s or 168? I mean, if we don't care about ammo, and in this case we don't, the double 51 is definitively the better option. It's more likely to produce one hit than the, the higher percentage single shot. If all we're looking for is one, and of course we got none. Can't catch a break on the double coin flip. That's, uh, that's brilliant. Okay, good. No, that's uh, fantastic, everybody. Good work. Are we hurt enough to try the revival protocol? The answer is yes. We have two people who are on fire. So we're going to go for the big heal. Here comes the restoration. This should have everybody fully patched up. We don't want anybody in a situation where one lucky shot or like a critical can take somebody out. We simply cannot allow that shit. So this is going to heal Jules back to full. It will also put out her fire. Anybody else who needs a touch up? No. The only other thing we can do here really is just drop a grenade. And you know what? Yes, I'm, I'm actually going to do that. Let's drop that grenade. Anything we can... No, you know what? We're better off to reload. We could drop the grenade, but the reload is actually vastly superior. We can maybe chain shot next round. We're going to have to take one punch from this gatekeeper. There's nothing we can do about it. Was that? Oh, Nikolai Lebedendev. Why didn't you run, Nikolai? You saw the big puddle of purple slop, dude. All you had to do was move it. Going to shoot at Aki Breaky? That's fine. You won't kill him. It's, it's, no. What are you going to resurrect some people? Actually, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, this is the big Mogamba. Eh, I mean, th this is why we threw the heal. You have resurrected a civilian and a civilian. All right, well, and if nothing else, it's just free kills for us. This piece of shit is going to make it, like, as difficult as possible, aren't they? Our Skulljack is going to have to chase that piece of garbage all the way across the map. That's real freaking irritating. On the plus side, though, we have a chain shot available, and Emmy Lou Juglik is in a position to capitalize on it. Man, this mission, though. This mission. No, don't shoot the Psy Zombie. Shoot the thing that made the Psy Zombie and kill it in one hit because its stupid shell is open now. We've cracked the shell. It's time for the Gatekeeper to be no longer a part of this mortal coil. There you go. You're all dead now. It's all good. You're all done. That's it. You're done. I'm tempted to try and shoot the Codex, or at least cause damage to that Codex, to see if we could get it to clone and make it easier. Ideally, if Grandpa Festus could just get his shit together and frost bomb it, that actually solves all of our problems. You know what, Grandpa Festus? This is your job. You have one job now, and it is to frost bomb this Codex. So all I really need is to make sure you can see that Codex. Yes. If you can see it, you can bomb it. Get over there. And, you know, then once this piece of garbage shit show is all wrapped up, the only thing we have to do is then kill the resulting avatar. So, <laughs> you know, mission accomplished, basically. There's got to be another faceless on this map somewhere, too, which I suppose is something we should seriously consider looking out for. So let's get everybody as far over here as we can. We may even take a turn to try and get some reloads off before we Skulljack that Codex. I mean, we can't do the Skulljack this turn anyway. Simply because we're not going to be able to get in range. Is there a door? Yeah, there's a garage door. On the move. Codex isn't going anywhere this turn. Wolfpack, let's get you over here. And you know what? We're going to have you reload. Anybody we can who's down ammunition is going to try and crack the reload. Let's rock! Tigress. I think we're just going to put you in a flanking position and then have you reload. It's not like that Codex is going anywhere. Don't kick open the giant swinging door that would have made it convenient for everybody else. No, no, that's fine. Just, uh, you know, think about you first, Judy Juglick. It's all about the Tigris. Codex is still frozen, but it's going to thaw next turn. Oh, good. There was a faceless over there. Fantastic. Well, we knew there was one on the map. He's going to come take a swipe at Judy Juglick. But at this point, what harm? It can't, can't hurt. She's already taken damage. Come do your worst, shit biscuit. Come on, show me what you got. Do your worst. No, I dare you. You didn't even get a go. Well then. 
Are we going to Skull Jack the Codex this turn? Yes, because if we don't Skull Jack the Codex this turn, it's just going to run around like an asshole. So, Emmy Lou, we're going to bring you over here. On my way. You have plenty of bullets. Probably just going to have you be on Overwatch. Do we want to go ahead with the Skull Jack? I think the answer is yes. Let's go ahead with the Skull Jack. First things first, we'll be doing it from this tile. That gives us cover. Can we Skull Jack a frozen statue? Well, apparently Skull Jack in it immediately thaws it, so yes. This should not have the potential to miss because this is a mission objective and those don't typically have any chance to miss. Small intel cache, sure. I'm just, I'll take the lower percentage one just because I don't need the extra damage. Everybody, I think these, this team has suffered enough. Done. Go ahead and spawn my avatar then. Okay, the avatar has spawned. I was gonna say in the worst possible position, but this honestly is not that bad for us. A 23 health avatar just standing here. He's gonna be dead in one turn. He's about to get the shit shotgunned out of him. Go ahead and take your reaction move. It doesn't matter. You can't physically run far enough. Okay, 80% then for that. But that's really not the shot we want to take. I mean, the shot we want to take is the wolf pack with a uh, shotgun to the face. Can we get a flank shot? No. Can we run and gun? Nope. Did we destroy its cover? Absolutely. Would we rather do that? Does anybody have a run and gun? I mean, yes, the Tigress does, but do we want to have her pull all the way over? Oh, you know what? Grandpa Festus has a chain shot. Never mind, this problem is already solved. Grandpa Festus, if you would be so kind, sir. Yeah, Pete, I, you know, I was talking about hunting, fishing, loving every day here, a little bit of Luke Bryan style, but what we're going to do instead, we'll go hunt me an avatar, and when I'm done, we'll fish his corpse out of the drink, haul it back to the lab, and let Dr. Tigan defile it. So we are not going to get the kill, although it is on fire. No armor, four health left, and absolutely 100% positively in fuego. He's going to teleport, which is fine. Yeah, you're dead then. We got no problems. Emmy Lou Juglick got a shot at you. 94%. Uh, you know what? I'm not even going to risk the miss. I'm just going to drop a grenade on your face. There you go. Enjoy that. A little bit of grenade taste for you. How's it taste? I'm going to guess it tastes burny. How does the grenade taste, Ralph? They taste like burning. There you go. Done. Now all we got to do is kill this stupid faceless. And this pile of garbage mission is absolutely 100% positively finally over give him two to the mouth judy jugs might even only take one nope oh, and actually is gonna take both of them all right well that's why we gave him two to the mouth judy jugs you want to follow that up there we go two to the mouth judy j gives him two to the jaw men is one five status confirmed we're not picking up any additional contacts the ao is clear and i feel a little less Angry. I mean, I'm still angry, but I feel a little less angry about the damage we took, considering when the mission where you go fight the Avatar, somebody usually winds up hurt anyway, so, I mean, it was probably always going to happen if we were dealing with the Avatar. We got a mission objective completed. We saved the Haven. Hopefully, we didn't suffer catastrophic wound times. We probably did, but, you know, man can dream. I had a dream. A dream of ridiculously low wound times after taking catastrophic damage in a otherwise stupid shit show of a mission. When I woke, that dream, however, was taken from me by Operation Blood Soaked Mountain, which wasn't really blood soaked so much as simply blood spattered. Sounded a little bit like Morgan Freeman at the end of this. Did he have a dream? I, Morgan Freeman, also had a dream. A dream of a solid career of high paying voice work throughout 50 years of Hollywood royalty. You want to watch a movie about penguins? I, Morgan Friedman, can make that movie about penguins seem less utterly life-ruiningly, punishingly dull as a documentary about penguins actually is. Because I am Morgan Friedman. You would listen to me read the phone book if I so was inclined to read the phone book. A. Aronson. A. Adams. I could go on and on like so, and you would simply sit and listen to the pleasant, melodic tone of my rich baritone voice. My Morgan Friedman's coming on, I think. 
It's getting, it's getting better. I wouldn't say it's good, but it's getting better. It's definitely better than my Bane, and it's better than, which who sounds a little more like Elmer Fudd than Bane. Coming along. See, even Judy Jugler here, she's like, yeah, you're right, Pete, look, you know, the Morgan Freeman was actually not shamefully bad. I'll give it to you. I'll, I will, I will allow it. Despite the fact that you got me stabbed by a crystal and shot and set on fire, I'm, I'm still all right with it. It did save me the trouble of lighting this cigar. There's that. How long? Come on. What is up with these mission load times, man? This modded run has been just mission load time, mission load time, mission load time, mission load time. Thank Christ. I'm considering on my next mod run just taking out all, and I mean all, of the cosmetic mods. Because I'm pretty sure the cosmetic mods are what's doing that to the load times. Although I suppose it could be some of the after mission stuff, which I know they've already coded in to work. So the mods may be conflicting with some of the existing code, could be. Unfortunately, on this save, I can't disable those mods because it'll break the save. You know what? We actually did get the Morgan Friedman ridiculously low load wound times here. That's right, Pete. You came back graced with not only a documentary about penguins, but also only 11 days in the hospital for your most egregiously wounded trooper. I think you should be quite pleased and quite happy about the performance of the team on this mission. It's like Andy Dufresne when he crawled through 500 miles of shit to escape, reborn and clean, down in Chexalacoatl, Mexico, to the white sand beaches of the Pacific. It was just as blue as I imagined, Pete. Just as blue as I imagined. No promotions, but I think everybody on this mission except for Jules is max rank. Look at the kill to mission ratio for the Tigress, though. It's real good. It's real good. She's closing in on 5 to 1, man. Was that 33 missions? She'd need 165? I mean, she's she's closing in on it. Commander, although I firmly believe the specimen we have recovered is crucial to the alien uh -huh. essence, we currently do not have the means of properly studying. Well, that's because you blew up the shadow chamber. Dr. Tigan, you should fucking knock that shit off. If you hadn't blown it up, we'd be fine. Yes, yes, complete the Avatar Autopsy Shadow Project. This is fine. I don't think we can actually do that. Resistance in the Western U.S. is grateful for my efforts to repel the aliens' retaliatory strike, and also for you giving them the plot of Blood Soaked Mountain, next year's best movie, Oscar winner guaranteed, because it has Leonardo DiCaprio in it, where he's, you know, horribly abused, otherwise tortured and tormented, and people are just like, it's so riveting. Look at him. He's shiny and bright, like a perfect diamond. It's also where I'm going to wrap things up. If you enjoyed the episode, feel free to drop a like down in the comment section. Your support does really mean a lot to us, and if you'd like to... Ugh. No, that's fine, Optimus Prime. I mean, normally this is Bradford shtick, but go ahead. You might as well get in on it. Why not? Outro interruptions every time. Go ahead. Yeah, I find I don't really care about that as all. Uh, just not even a little. Especially if they start with you, Optimus Prime. I'd, I'd kind of be inclined if they were like, we're starting with Optimus Prime. I'd be like, you know what? Go ahead. I'll give you two weeks head start. Then I'm going to start fighting it. But for two weeks... Process as many as you want. If that's the price I have to pay to get rid of Optimus Prime, it's worth it. Worth it. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.